All right, this video is to document the build process for the Texas Trebuchet Fireball Shoot. So when I arrived, Bob and Robert had already spent about a week in the shop and they had cut all these pieces to shape and glued up some of the blocks for the windstrums. They were almost done with the counterweight boxes. Pineapple for scale. Do that again. <laughs> the boxes have gussets on the sides with lots of screws in them and copper bushings. It's one inch diameter steel bar. Here's Bob drilling holes for the cotter pins in the counterweight box hangers. Here we are, I'm drilling a bunch of holes in some of the frame pieces and moving things around in the shop. We're setting up a test frame over there. In the foreground here, you can see one of the winch blocks glued up. So we are building a mock frame. It is the frame. And we're bolting it together slowly. We got four bolts in. And the entire frame has been meticulously squared and braced off with pieces and finish nails. So the, the rails are square. The cross brace on the ground is square. The towers are vertical. Um, and we are finally getting somewhere because now this piece is laid out exactly uh, basically to within sixteenths of an inch and Robert is starting to mark bolt locations and then hopefully this afternoon we can drill all those holes and then the holes in this frame pieces will then be used as templates to drill holes in the rest of the frame pieces these are the ground cross pieces with the square mortise for a square nut. That's because that side's going to be on the ground. So when it's on the ground, you can't access the nut. So the square nut is recessed, so it can't turn. So you can tighten the bit. This is the square mortising machine. Here I am drilling holes in the tower braces on the drill press. I've got a level because everything has to be uh, very leveled and squared. So I check the level of the table and match it with the level of the piece. Drill from both sides. We're building three different trebuchets here. So whenever you're doing an operation, there's a lot of work to do, lots of repetition. Here, Bob and I are laying out the first set of tower braces with their tower ties. We used one of the tower ties as a template, drilled out all the other ones. And now we're using the tower braces as a template and drilling out all the holes in the tower braces. Here's Robert in the foreground on the square mortising machine. Now we're putting on the axle support blocks on the towers. These help close the span of the axle and transfer all the forces into shear instead of bending. We're bolting them on with 5 8 bolts at the bottom and 3 8 bolts at the top. And Robert's transferring the groove onto the towers. Here, Bob and I are attaching those support blocks to the towers, and then we're also going ahead and putting on the gussets. These are triangular pieces of plywood that reinforce the towers. And the towers fold up at these gussets. So it's, a, it's only attached to the main tower, and then the two braces, uh, they swivel on those bolts. And uh, the towers fold up for transport. 
lots of work here lifting it up, putting it back down because certain drilling operations have to be done from the other side. Here the tower braces are finished up. Tower frames are done. <laughs> so here they're in the transport configuration, and when you fold them up, those gaps close at the top. These are the angular recesses for square washers on the angled connections. These are all the winch mounts. Pressing in copper pushing the winch mounts. So we used a C clamp to press in a copper bushing here. Getting a pipe on the clamp for extra leverage. And here we're assembling the ground frames. They bolt together and then they fold up for transport. And then on the bottoms of these pieces, we have square nuts because they're sitting on the ground. So the square nut is recessed and makes, makes it so you can tighten the bolt without having to access the bottom part. So Bob and I are putting these together and then folding them up. Here's what one looks like when it's deployed with the angled connections. Here I'm putting in a square nut. Here I'm chiseling out a recess for a round washer. This is on the underside of the front of the winch mounts. They, the bolts were protruding, they were interfering with the frame folding up, so we decided to recess these. I drilled it with the hole saw and then cut it into four segments. And those chips just pop right out. Cleaning up the hole a little bit. These are the ratchets and pawls and the triggers. They were CNC cut out on a plasma. And Robert's drilling out the holes in the winch drums.
So the winch drums start out octagonal, and then we drilled the holes in them for the handle spokes, and then we turn them round on the lathe. This was actually just my second time using a lathe. So Robert did all the tricky stuff with mounting it in there. All the wood shavings. Get into it nice and slow from the right hand of center. Once the corners are rounded, they really look like uh, Tinker Toys. Ratchet gear is loaded under the shaft and butted right next to the winch drum. Winch drum is pinned onto the shaft with a quarter inch steel pin. And then there's a little one inch diameter washer because the winch drum is one inch. This is a first. <laughs> Here we're working on the throwing arms. He's planing the different pieces to exact thicknesses because they're going to be glued on the sides and act as spacers to keep the arm and the counterweight box centered in the machine. We glued up this, these two 2x6s two with Gorilla Glue. and plane down the sides of the arms to give it a taper. They're tapered in both directions, actually. Here we're gluing those spacer blocks onto the arm. The arm has copper pipe glued inside of it for the bushing material. This was our first mounting of an arm and box in the shop. As you can see, the shop's not tall enough. We went along the corners with the router with, I think, a one inch bit and rounded the edges so that the rope will lash the arm without sharp edges. Any less of a round wouldn't be so great, but any more is unnecessary, so it's beautiful. Looks like a throwing arm now. This is the line separator, the rope separator. So tip of the arm will have the, uh, the sling and the trigger ring and the Flemish horse. Actually, the trigger ring might be right on the end, and the swing is down up here. So now we've finally got everything done, and we're ready to load it all up. It's all folded up for transport. That's all the tools we had to bring with us. Everything was loaded into the truck and on the trailer. Now we've arrived at Cauldron's Keep when we're setting up the trebuchets. So we drive along and drop off all the parts in their spots.
And then here I loosen up the bolts and unfold the base frame, bolt in the cross pieces, and we level up the frame, tighten everything up. And then we unfold the tower braces, put on the tower ties. Everything is done here with 5 8 bolts. Lots of ratcheting and wrenches. Mounting the winch drum at the back of the machine there. We discovered that we put some of the bolts in that tower tie backwards. So we had to change those around. And we do a couple uh, dry fire tests. We also had forgotten to grease the axles. So we had to take the arm off and put it back on. I'm starting work on rigging the Flemish horse. This is how the machine winches down. Then I had some extra work to do to attach the swing and the trigger line. So the rest of the team set up uh, the rest of the trebuchets, both of them together. And now everything's ready to rock and roll. So check out the next video on the, the shoot itself.